Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about model context protocol. Why is it needed? What are the benefits? And how does it change the whole LLM to tools interactions? Before we jump into the protocol, let's first see some of the problems that exist if we did not have model context protocol at all. So if you think about most of the LLM use cases or the Gen AI use cases involve using some tools. This could be Gmail, Calendar, your CRM. And this is a B2B scenario where a business is trying to connect to these tools and do some uh, Gen AI use cases. But in the consumer world also, these could be shopping websites or any other websites where an LLM or an AI agent is trying to connect. So these are the tools on one side. And then these are LLMs. Now, typically you could use LLMs such as an OpenAI. You could use another choice of LLM, let's say Anthropic models or some other pieces. So these LLMs need to talk to these tools and perform certain tasks. So one of the problem that is in front of agent developers or anybody who's trying to build an AI workflow and AI system is they need to have this LLM connect and understand each of these applications. And each of these connections are point to point, which is complex, hard to maintain. And these LLMs as they come up and the new models are developed, they all need to learn all of these tools, the APIs, how do they behave, what are the functions available, all of those pieces. So very complex environment, very hard to build agents in this environment. So the goal of MCP is to simplify this interaction, create a standard interface between the tools and LLMs. Another part of the complexity emerges from the fact that this causes what we call an N cross M problem. The idea is that you can have n different AI systems, LLMs, m different tools, and as these tools grow, each of these LLMs now need to interface. So this causes this n cross m problem where you need to worry about every LLM being able to understand every tool and utter complexity, no standard interfaces. So essentially, one of the way to simplify this whole interaction is for these tools to define functions very explicitly. So in our nomenclature here, Gmail is a tool, Calendar is a tool, CRM is a tool. Gmail can define functions such as send email or find contact. Calendar can have create event. These are functions and each of the tools can have very specific functions and on this side LLMs need to be able to understand what are the functions available to it for calling and what are the parameters needed by each function for example for send an email you need the body you need the email address you need the subject for creating an event you need date time time zone etc so these become functions and the LLM now needs to understand what are the different functions available, what are the different tools available to perform a task. So for example, when you tell an AI agent which uses LLM in the back to say, create an event with Rishi, it should be able to understand to find an email address, I go to Gmail API, search for Rishi, find the email address and then go create an event with Rishi. So it could use multiple tools as far as it understands the tools available and the functions available for each of those. So let's look at a basic MCP architecture and how MCP works. One of the core concept is an MCP server. The MCP server sits in front of each of these tools and provides a standard interface. Let's draw our MCP server. So this is an MCP server. 
which interfaces with Gmail. This is an MCP server that interfaces with Calendar. Now, one of the important pieces, these MCP servers can interface with the corresponding tools in whatever uh, protocol. This side of the protocol or this side of the transport is not governed. MCP server can talk to the CRM over REST API uh, or could be built into the same code base, use any other transport there. So this part is not defined. What is defined is what does an MCP server look like? How does it expose the list of functions to the MCP client? So this side is the MCP client. An MCP client can interface with MCP servers in a standard way. And now, LLM does not need to be able to understand Gmail and calendar and CRM specific information. All it needs to know is how to interface with an MCP client, standard protocol, standard way of discovering tools, standard way of calling functions, all of the functions. So this implementation becomes quite simple. So there, there are a few different components when I look at the MCP end-to-end. -end. One is called a host application. And I think the host application could be an LLM, could be something like a cloud desktop, an AI agent, all of those could be called a host application. So for our example, let's consider a cloud desktop and an LLM. The, the second piece is what is the MCP client, which we draw earlier. Now typically MCP client could be built into the host application. So the way to think about it is MCP client is a very thin layer. It's built inside the host application so that can just connect to the MCP server, like Cloud Desktop has a built-in MCP client which can interface with any of the MCP servers as needed. Then comes the MCP server which we had earlier here. MCP server sits in front of these tools. As I mentioned earlier, this could be built-in like somebody could design all of this as a single unit or it could be a separate unit used as a hosted MCP server with web API here. Again, completely left to the implementer's choice, but the meta point here is MCP servers could be hosted by an independent company which works with a whole bunch of these tools or certain tool developers and larger organizations may build MCP server into their tools and expose MCP server to any of the agent builders out there. Now, what is very well defined is the protocol between MCP server and MCP client. There are a couple of different transport that have been defined here. One is local transport or STDIO. And the second is SSE, which is server sent events, in which case client is remote and located at a different place than the MCP server. To recap, again, two different protocol supported STDIO or local. These are the two different transport supported. Or SSE, server sent events, which is remote in nature. So I think this captures most of the high level capabilities of MCP. What is a client? What is a server? What is a host application? What is a tool? And the protocol that's available. Now let's dig deeper into what the protocol is. So here what I have drawn is a few different pieces of the puzzle. User who's going to interact with an AI agent system, let's say such as Claude, MCP client, MCP server, and the tool that we're gonna interface. So the first step when you bring up, as we said, the host application, which can constitute the Claude and MCP client together, the MCP client connects to the MCP server, which is right here. 
In this stage, there are three things that are happening. One is the initiation, where the client initiates a connection to the server. Server returns the list of capabilities. So pretty much the capabilities discovery is the big piece here, where now the client knows what are the tools available, what capabilities are available, so that it can respond with the right set of tools and right set of functions when AI requests it. And this set of capabilities is registered here with the client. Now that this initial capabilities discovery has happened and the registration has happened, the user can ask questions to the AI, right capabilities can be used and responded. Let's see what is the step-by-step -step there. So let's assume the user asks a question to Claude, what is the weather like? At this point of time, since all the capabilities are registered with the MCP client, and this is a single unit, we need to see what tools are available that can answer this weather question. So AI will ask request for capabilities. MCP client will return the capabilities available and might even request permission needed. At this point of time, if there is an external tool that is used and needs access, the user needs to allow permission to that external tool because this capability that is needed might require certain authorization, certain authentication from that tool. So that permission is sent to the end user. The end user grants the permission. At this point of time, MCP client can go ahead and request for more information from that external tool via MCP server. And this request is in a very standardized manner. So this sends standard request. This is then querying the tool. Now, remember this interface is not defined, so it could be locally built in into a single unit. It could be over the web API. And this is what we simplified because every tool developer can use either an MCP server, which is designed for everybody, or build their own MCP server. So this is gets information. And once that information is returned back to the MCP server, MCP server returns a very, very well formatted request, formatted response, and MCP client returns external data. So this comes back, the external data, which is then returned back to the user. So if you think about a lot of information going back and forth here in a mermaid chart for a simple query like, what is the weather in San Francisco? But this standardization can accelerate innovation. All of these pieces here is standardized from a capability discovery registration, what is the format to request, what is the response, tool discovery, all of that. And agent developers need to be able to use all of these tools. So that means the entire work here is reduced to developing MCP server for all of the tools out there. And all of the AI systems need to build MCP client and rest of the work to build intelligent systems on top gets simplified significantly. So I hope that gives you a quick overview and an understanding of what is an MCP protocol, model context protocol. How does an MCP client interact with an MCP server? What are the different steps in the whole process? And how you can use MCP to build agentic systems end-to-end. -end. Thank you.